one of the big challenges we have is to understand how brains work. How is it that cells are able to communicate together and create circuits and create uh, larger circuits and produce complex behavior? This is one of the greatest mysteries in scientific research, how the brain works. Uh, the bee has a role in contributing to understanding uh, and solving this, this major puzzle. It's a tiny brain. There's only a fraction of the number of brain cells compared to the human, and yet the bee is capable of very complex behavior. The bee and the human are not that different in the sense that both are incredibly social animals, and another way of, of interpreting that is to say that the social environment is very important to humans and very important to bees, and it, it impacts all aspects of biology, and we're learning that it impacts um, these various aspects of biology by orchestrating changes in the genome. The two groups of organisms that have evolved um, some of the most spectacular traits on the planet are the social insects and the humans. What are some of these traits? Um, well, I can give you a, a three traits, agriculture, warfare, and symbolic language. From bees, we learn that nature versus nurture doesn't make sense. Both are involved, but we already knew that. So what have we learned really new? What we've learned really new is that nature and nurture are really not as different as we thought they were. Nature refers to inherited differences in gene activity. There might be bees that come from different genetic stocks. They may have different patterns of gene activity in their brains and therefore behave differently because of who they are, their inheritance. Likewise, we know that the environment has a huge role in shaping bee behavior, especially the social environment, and we've also learned that the environment acts through the genome. It can cause genes to turn on or turn off, or turn up or turn down. The honeybee lives in a very complex society, and one of the hallmarks of a complex society is division of labor. Different individuals do different jobs. In the honeybee colony, this is structured largely along the lines of age. So when the bee is young, she works in the hive, and then when she's older, she goes outside to collect food. So the question is, how do those changes occur? What happens inside the bee to propel it along this trajectory? How does it know to work in the hive and then later on to become a forager? And what we have found is that this pattern of behavioral maturation is regulated by a set of changes in the activity of thousands of genes in the bee brain. So when the bee is young and working in the hive, there is one brain molecular signature of gene activity, and when the bee is a forager, there's a very different molecular signature of brain activity. Bees can change their jobs depending on the needs of the colony. If there is a shortage of foragers, some of the young bees can grow up prematurely. It would be the same thing as if, God forbid, something happens in our society, everyone over 16 disappears, then some of the 15-year-olds would uh, take over the driving activities. As a father of a 15-year-old, that's a very scary thought. My name is Gene Robinson, and I'm the Swanland Chair at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Thank you.